Good evening. My name is Gina DuVernay, and I am the Adult Services Manager for Gwinnett County Public Library. And um, thank you for being here tonight. I know the traffic, you know, kind of tried to stop you, but you're here, so thank you. Um, just in case you ran past it, we have some cookies and brownies and all the good things. We brought them just for you. <laughs> and tea and hot chocolate, because, you know, that's it's cozy, just like this library. And we also have um, our bookseller back here, uh, Read It Again, and uh, Kim. Kim is back there. Wave, Kim. Hi. <laughs> she has copies of, of the book that we're going to be discussing tonight, um, well, that Paige is presenting on tonight, uh, for sale for you. So I'm just going to read um, her bio, and we're going to get started. We're going to have some fun. All right, seasoned travel writer and Atlanta local Paige Watts has spent a decade writing all about everything travel. She chronicles her journeys on her blog called pagemindsthegap.com, where she highlights the joys of visiting Southern destinations. In addition to her blog, Paige has written for a number of online and print publications, including The Culture, Culture Trip, Matador Network, Epicure and Culture, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> MSN and Travel the South. She received a double Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Evansville in Creative Writing and Literature with a minor in International Studies. Let's welcome Paige Watts. Thank you. All right. Hey, so hi, I'm Paige. Like she said, I'm a travel blogger. Um, with Page Minds the Gap. I'm not originally from Atlanta, but um, I have lived here since 2016, and my family is from Atlanta, so I've been coming here my whole life. So I love it. I love Atlanta, even though I've been all over the world, always come back to here. Um, I also am a figure skater, and I coach Learn to Skate at Center Ice in Sandy Springs. So just a little bit about me. All right, so my this is my first book, What's With Atlanta? Um, it's a guide to the quirks, personality, and charm of the ATL. So it answers all those questions you have, like why every, every street name is Peachtree, um, why locals hate it when you call it Hot Atlanta, why Atlanta can't handle a little bit of snow. So it's like things that people who've just moved here would want to know, things that people who've lived here their whole life might take for granted. And even if you've just lived here a few years, maybe you also don't know some things and take some things for granted, too. Ah! <laughs> what happened? I pressed too hard. Here, I know I can do this. Don't look at the answers, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm not going to use that then. OK. First, I want to know how much y'all know, or how many things y'all have done in Atlanta. Would you like to help me? Yeah, I'll pass it out. So we're going to play a little Atlanta bingo. Um, it's really simple. Just your personal, you want to take some? Uh-huh. Half and half. Just what you've done and just mark it off. And every sheet is different, so every bingo card is going to be different. You want one? On Here you go. Do you want to do? I'll just you don't. You don't want to do a. We'll use the same pencil though. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Here you go. Pencil. Yeah, pencil. Everybody have a pencil over here. Okay. Hi. Oh, okay. You want to do one? Yes. Do you need a pencil? Okay. Do you have pencil? Okay. And one more. And two pencils. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So just call out if you get a bingo. You should do one too, Kev. So far, my husband is the reigning champ. He marked off 16 last time. <laughs> I think I had a bad card last time. It had all sports stuff, and I haven't done all the sports stuff. So let's see. Anyone have a bingo yet? No. Oh, we have to go out and stuff and come back. <laughs> What's that? Stop checking in? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let's see. I think I got a good one this time. I didn't. Every time I think I got a bingo, I can't find it. You got bingo. You got bingo. You got bingo. You got bingo. Yay. <laughs> Let's see. 
Have you done that one? Do we have another bingo? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I didn't get bingo this time either. All right, I got 14 this time though. 15. How many do you have? Nine. Nine? Yeah. What about you? Thirteen. Thirteen? Ten. Ten. Nine. But no bingos. No bingos. You're the only bingo. You got a bingo? How many did you mark off? How many did you mark off overall? Fourteen. Fourteen. And you got a bingo? Yes. Ah, three bingos. No bingo. I must have had hard cards. <laughs> Sixteen? All right. I think we've got. Oh, wait, I got a bingo. Okay. So we're up to five, I think. Five bingos? That's pretty good. Um, what, what did you not mark off that you wanted to mark off that you really want to do? Dressed up for Dragon Con. That's a good one. Anyone else? Does it count if your kids have done it? It doesn't count if your kids have done it. Kids have done it. The streetcar also for me. Where's this, is the streetcar only in Auburn? It's um, downtown, so it goes from Martin Luther King uh, State Park to Centennial? I, I think Centennial. Okay. Yeah, it's only got like a few stops. It's not a lot. Yeah. Anything on your list that you want to do? Uh, watch the Atlanta Dream Play. <laughs> That's a good one. That sounds cool. Yeah. Have you been it does look like fun. I haven't done that one either. That'd be good. Do we have another bingo? Great. Anyone else? Was there something that you were really proud that you've done? It was mine. I'm proud of seeing the pandas at the zoo because they're about to go away. So. Oh yeah. I've been to the Jimmy Carter Library. We took our granddaughter. Uh, really interesting. Yeah. That's on my list. I still haven't done that yet. If Good. I had done that one, I would have had a double bingo. <laughs> well, I guess we got to go then, so that he can have his double bingo. All right. Anyone else have anything to share? No. Dining around Buford Highway. That's a good one. That's always fun. Favorite place to eat on the weekends. Or yeah. No, this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Good. We almost <laughs> ate there today. I know. Somewhere different every time. So many places. All right. I'm going to not use the clicker. <laughs> okay. So why is it called Atlanta? Atlanta's always been a transportation uh, town. It was founded in 1837. It was the end of the Western and Atlantic train line from the Midwest to Georgia. Um, then it was known as Thrasherville, and by 1842 the settlement had been built up and they planned the terminus for the train line and started calling the settlement terminus. Um, it didn't stay terminus for very long. Uh, the depot was built in 1842 and by then the, they changed the town's name to Marthasville after Governor Wilson Lumpkin's daughter. Uh, it was incorporated December 23rd, 1843. So we're coming up on an anniversary. <laughs> um, in 1845, the chief engineer of the Georgia Railroad suggested changing the name to Atlantic Pacifica in honor of the rail line. They shortened it to Atlanta, and um, everyone was pretty happy with the name change because uh, it ended up being close to Martha Lumpkin's middle name, Atlanta. But I also read a little bit more into that, and <laughs> I think her dad just said that <laughs> that was her middle name, and she didn't really have a middle name before then. But Atlanta was her nickname, so they just kind of just kind of like snuck it in there. <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, it's totally fine. It was her middle name the whole time. Um, by this point, not a single train had actually come through Atlanta. It's crazy. Um, so the name change to Atlanta was officially approved on December 26, 19, or sorry, 1845. Uh, so that's about two years after the town was first incorporated. And then three months after that, the first train finally came through Atlanta. <laughs> okay. 
All right, what's the deal with all the Peachtree streets? <laughs> so we've got 71 streets with Peachtree in their name, um, and a lot more if you count everything else, like Peachtree Corners, town names. <laughs> Don't even know how many there would be with all that. Um, so Peachtree Street is the most famous, and its name changes a ton. So it goes from Peachtree Street in Midtown to Buckhead, then Peachtree Road, then Peachtree Boulevard, then Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, which is what I actually took to get up here. <laughs> um, so you think it makes sense because Georgia is the peach state, but the name, I mean, we don't have like any actual peach trees. So where does the name actually come from? It's from um, the Muscogee people. They think that maybe the name translated to standing pitch tree and then either our southern accents or just complete mistranslation, pitch kind of sounds like peach. So a pitch tree is a pine tree and we've got tons of those. So that theory kind of makes sense, <laughs> but no one's like totally 100% for sure. Um, and also Georgia usually comes in third or fourth in natural peach national peach production behind usually California and South Carolina. I don't remember the other one, probably Florida, if I had to guess. Yeah. All right, all about the Braves. So the Braves started in Boston in 1871, which actually makes them the oldest continuously operating professional sports franchise in the country. Really good trivia fact to remember. <laughs> um, so they started as the Boston Red Stockings, then changed their name to the Boston Braves in 18, er, 1912. They moved to Milwaukee and were then the Milwaukee Braves. Um, and then they finally came to Atlanta in 1966 and they kept the name Braves. So the 90s was a great time to be an Atlanta Braves fan. <laughs> They went from having the worst record in the league in 1990 to making it into the World Series in 91. Um, they did lose that game, but it's still a good comeback because from 91 to 2005, they won 14 straight division titles and five National League pennants. And then they won the World Series in 95 and 2021. <laughs> yes. How did Atlanta become the Hollywood of the South? Um, or Yollywood, that's also a good <laughs> nickname for it. So in 2008, the, co the governor signed a generous tax incentive uh, for film productions because Georgia had just lost the production of Ray, um, a biopic about Ray Charles, who's a Georgia native. They lost that biopic to Louisiana. That's kind of like, you can't have that. <laughs> so the incentive gives film productions a 20% tax credit for filming in Georgia and then on top of that, an additional 10% tax credit to add just the Peach logo at the end of the credits. Um, so in 2016, there were more major films made in Georgia than there were in California. Yeah. And that's how we've attracted movies like The Hunger Games, the Marvel franchise, Fast and Furious, um, Baby Driver, and all of Tyler Perry's movies. Um, it also means that we get a lot of TV shows like The Walking Dead, Stranger Things, and Vampire Diaries. All right, and now we're gonna play more games because I like playing Yay. games. So we're gonna play some Atlanta trivia and we're gonna see uh, how much you know about Atlanta. So what animal is the Georgia Aquarium's mascot that was named after Betty White? Me? Is it a beluga whale? Any other guesses? No. What did you no. say? Beluga whale? A penguin? A penguin. penguin. Okay. Any other? Guess, guess, guess a sea creature. <laughs> he says otter. Otter. <laughs> it's a dolphin. <laughs> so Betty the dolphin debuted in 2011. I think they uh, changed their mascot every few years. Not like I don't think Betty's like officially completely gone, but I do think they have a new mascot, and I have no idea what it is, honestly, because it's not as interesting as Betty. <laughs> so what was the name of the uh, mascot for the '96 Olympics? There are like kind of two names, so I'll take either. Izzy, yeah. So it was originally called What Is It? They shortened it to Izzy because like, well, what is it? It's this weird morphable blue character that is supposed to just like, it can be anything. It can be whatever it wants. It is super appealing to kids. So I don't really remember it. I think my husband remembers it 
Do y'all remember it at all? No. I know, yeah, I was like, I was too young to remember it. But I do have like a little magnet that I took from my grandmother's house, so. All right, how did the Braves pitcher uh, Pascal Perez earn the nickname Perimeter Pascal? Perimeter because he didn't, couldn't read English and got lost trying to get the game. He got lost trying to get to um, the Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, which is the then the old Braves Stadium, um, which is kind of funny because like it's not even anywhere near 285. <laughs> so you just have to imagine him going around and you're like, if you just went in on any of those major interstates, you'd have you'd have come on in, you'd have passed. It. Also, three times is what 180 miles of like three hours oh. that he's oh. stuck on there I didn't without think traffic. I never <laughs> thought about that. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's never without traffic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm saying best case. I think I need to add that onto here because that's even funnier. All right, I, we just went to the zoo today. So, what animal at Zoo Atlanta was named after Mayor William B. Hartsfield? Millie B. And he is a gorilla. Yes. So Zoo Atlanta's had four Willy B gorillas, and I hate the way that they've named them. It's so confusing. All right, so the first Willy B, he died pretty young, so 1959 to 1961, and Mayor Hartsfield was like, y "You got to replace that gorilla that was named after me." So they really, really quickly replaced him. So Willy B the second, is the most famous, replaced him 1961. He lived till 2000. He's got a son, Willie B. Jr., to confuse everything. So he's been at the zoo since 98. And then Willie B. the third, who is actually the fourth Willie B., <laughs> he was just born this year. So there are now two Willie B.'s at the zoo. That's right. <laughs> what famous actor can you find among the soldiers of the Cyclorama Diorama? So they've got the statues that are out there in the foreground of the Cyclorama. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, they, the Gone with the Wind cast visited in the 1930s, and I think he was like, you know what's missing? <laughs> Me. <laughs> and so they did. They made one of the soldiers look like him, and he is still there. And now, you know, they've moved the cyclorama from by the zoo to the Atlanta History Center, and they've still kept his statue. What I don't know what you call it. <laughs> All right, so where is the gold on the Capitol Dome from? And bonus points if you know how they got it there. Anybody know how, how they got it here? In a rail? In a wagon. In a wagon. Yeah. In a wagon train. And no one wasn't old enough to see it. I forgot to write down again how much it was because I like it. Okay. But so the citizens of Lumpkin County donated gold for the dome in 1959. It's 43 ounces that they took from Dahlonega to Atlanta via wagon train that was like couple wagons and a couple uh, state patrol cars, people, some horses, some dogs, people walk in, they just like, it's like a whole thing. So <laughs> by 1977, half the gold had deteriorated because it was thin. They put it on in the winter and it, don't, it doesn't stick. So they had to bring in more gold and they did it all over again by wagon train <laughs> because they just really committed yeah. to the bit. So now they replace the gold as it flakes off. In 77, they replaced like the whole, like, the whole thing, I think. But now it's just kind of like piecemeal. How much does the peach drop, peach, weigh? Mm -hmm. 10 pounds. 60 pounds. 60 pounds. Any other guesses? 150. 150. 800 pounds. <laughs> Eight feet tall. Eight feet wide. Wow. A huge peach. Has anyone actually seen the peach drop? Because I have not seen it yet. <laughs> I've only seen it on TV. I've only seen it on TV. I've never seen it in person. So what's the name of the pipe organ that was custom built for the Fox Theater? Mighty Mo. Very good. Oh, good job. It's a 42 rank pipe organ with 3,622 pipes. It's custom built for the Fox in 1929. It's the second largest theater organ in the U.S. And you can still go on tour and see it today. Yes, you can still see it there. When you get the behind the scenes tours, they do a great little ghost tour. It's my, fa my favorite way to do the behind the scenes tours is their annual ghost tour. Don't they still play it for films? 
for sing along before family films. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. They still, play I think they still, yeah, they still use it. So from 1886 to 1959, the price of a glass of Coca-Cola stayed at a fixed price. How much? A nickel. Dime. Five cents. Five cents. Five cents. This five cents. Whoa. So some sellers began upping the price to, oh my gosh, six cents in the 50s. <laughs> but Coca-Cola stopped actually advertising the five cent because they would give the stores the sign that says Coca-Cola, five cents. If you're a business, how are you going to put up that free sign that Coca-Cola gave you and then charge six or seven cents? So they stopped selling uh, the, those, or they stopped giving out those free advertisements uh, in 1951. So it just kind of started to phase out. By 1959, the last nickel co Coke had been sold. Wow. And then it went all the way up to seven cents. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they also tried to get um, the like U.S. Mint to make a seven and a half cent coin <laughs> so that you could still just use one coin, but they could raise the price to seven and a half cents. But that didn't. Coca-Cola would think of that. Yeah. And I mean, you would think if anyone could do it, it would be them, but they, would think they, they would still didn't. <laughs> still didn't happen. And I think in some places it even went up to ten whole cents. Yes. Ten whole cents. Yeah. All right. What mythical creature became the symbol for Atlanta after the Civil the War? Phoenix. The Phoenix. The mythical bird that rises from its own ashes, symbol for Atlanta recovering from when Sherman burnt the city. <laughs> I think that's everything. Yep. So that's everything. Thank you. <laughs> right. Yeah, so anyone have any questions? <laughs> Like I know you do because you put them all, you wrote them all, you them all down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you went back. Yeah, yes, yes, right there. <laughs> um, when did you start writing your book? I started writing last October, or I guess I started re researching last October. Um, and I was finished with the researching, writing, sourcing all the photos, and like putting the whole <coughs> manuscript to send to the publisher. Uh, by April 1st, so it was six months. Six months. <laughs> and then it came out in September this year, so it was less than a year altogether. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Did you always want to be a travel writer? I kind of, not like always, always, but I started travel blogging when I studied abroad. Um, so that was 2013, so I've been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> um, and yeah, since I started doing the travel blog, since I like it was really casual, it was just for my friends and family then, but I've loved like turning it into a business. It's been so much fun. Yes. Which countries have you visited? That's not good. Oh, that's a lot. Um, England, Ireland, France, Germany, Denmark, Spain, Italy, Italy Switzerland, Costa Rica. Where else do we go? Belize, Scotland, Prague. Scotland, Czech Republic, uh, Canada, Mexico. A lot of Haiti. <laughs> a lot of a lot of things. Belize. Which yeah. is your favorite? I love Ireland. I just love it. It's just such a good place. Mm -hmm. Are you an Atlanta native? I am not originally from Atlanta. Um, so I, I moved here in 2016. When I saw that you had gone to the University of Evansville, I realized she didn't, she's not an Atlanta native. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I met anyone, I, anyone there. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. Um, and it's actually only like four and a half hours from Huntsville to uh, Evansville, which is everyone's like, really? <laughs> they make that face. Because <laughs> it's a lot further even from like Evansville to like Indianapolis. Right. Yeah, so it's like six hours from here to Evansville. I graduated from there too, and I just, really when I saw not? that, I thought, you know, that's real. That's no, I gotta go. I gotta hear this woman. <laughs> well, and I studied abroad at Harlickston. So, right, that's yeah. what I thought. There you go. Magical place. Do you have place. family here in Atlanta? Yeah, I have family here. I still have family here. Um, I've got family in Johns Creek, got family in Dawsonville. Um, Dahlonega now. Yeah, Dawsonville, Dahlonega yeah. now. And my dad grew up in Stone Mountain. My grandmother grew up in Lawrenceville. We're over in Smyrna now, so we're, like, we're all over the place. Tech. My dad went to Georgia Tech. 
my uncle's getting his name on a, a middle school gym in Cobb County, and we're going to go do that in a couple weeks and celebrate that. So, yeah, we're all over the town. <laughs> What's considered inside the perimeter inside, outside? So inside the perimeter is anything inside the 285 loop, and then outside the perimeter is outside the 285 loop, and what, how far you go and consider it still Atlanta is kind of personal. I feel like once the, once the traffic starts going, then I'm like, oh, I'm outside of Atlanta. <laughs> so going up like 85, yes. once I get past like 985, I'm like, I'm outside Atlanta now. <laughs> That's good. Yes? Um, if I only have one day to spend in Atlanta to see the sights, and I've already seen the aquarium, what should I do? I really like the world of Coke. I mean, and just like where else can you go taste all that? I, I just really like Coke too. <laughs> so I like the world of Coke, meet the polar bear. I'm a big fan of bears. Um, one whole day, I'm like, I'm trying to think of what I put down as my one day itinerary. Because <laughs> you can do the city pass and you can do like the world of Coke and you can do the um, uh, Civil Rights Museum, mm -hmm. National Center for Civil and human rights, um, and the College Football Hall of Fame, and you could probably do all that in one day, and you'd hit like three things. Easy. Yeah. yeah. You gotta eat at Mary Max. You gotta eat at Mary Max, that is good, yeah. You gotta hit the Atlanta History Center. Yeah, the Atlanta History Center, but you can spend a whole day at the Atlanta History Center, and then you're like, okay, but I didn't see anything besides the pictures. <laughs> and, and one of the places on the big old, the Jimmy Carter Library. Yeah, how long did y'all spend there? A couple of hours? Maybe. Oh, maybe three or four hours. Yeah. yeah. Depends upon how much. Like, I read everything. Yeah, you read all the things. Yeah. Um, and we had a eight or nine year old with us, so of course she kind of glanced over everything. Yeah. The thing that impressed her the most was there's a mock up of his White House office. Yeah, I think that, that's really That'd cool. be pretty cool to see. You got to see the pandas that are the last ones in the U.S. now. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Yeah. I definitely recommend a trip to the zoo. Because they're potentially sending them back. Yeah. They, I mean, they are sending them back sometime in 2024. Um, they're the last pandas in the U.S. And, I mean, the pandas are all kind of going away. I even saw that the Edinburgh Zoo um, in Scotland is also probably sending back, out, uh, sending back their pandas next year, too. So you got to see the pandas now, yes. like here, yes. before you have to go to China to see them. <laughs> yeah. And it's... it's it's hard to miss the High Museum or the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Yeah. They're both top notch. They're Especially nice. Atlanta Botanical during the Christmas yes. lights. Yes, Atlanta Lights's Botanical Gardens right now. Time. It's a very oh good time to they see also it. They do um, Halloween mm -hmm. decorations too. Oh, yeah. Botanical Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much for giving us. Thank you. <laughs> much. We really appreciate it. I will plug the library and say that your library card, you should check the website. There are sometimes there are discounts in some of these places, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, is it, I think the zoo, the zoo you can get a pass to, probably the aquarium. Yeah. I'm not sure about the aquarium. I know the zoo, but yeah, they, it yeah. changes. It, it fluctuates. So check it out. Yeah. If you don't have a library card, you know what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's right. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor, for being here tonight. All right. Thanks again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.